Parece que por fin Gambia ha dejado atrás el espectro de Jair Ayamé y se ha embarcado en el camino hacia la democracia con la elección, en diciembre pasado, del socialdemócrata Adama Barrow. Pero olvidar al expresidente dictador, que durante 22 años tuvo en jaque al país con un régimen de represión feroz, no será tarea fácil. Hoy Yamé está exiliado en Guinea Ecuatorial, donde según la prensa local, habría transferido una suma de unos 20 mil millones de pesos robados de las arcas del Estado. Durante el régimen de Yamé, mucha gente sufrió abusos de todo tipo. Tijan Barrow es una de las caras más conocidas del llamado antiyametismo. En las complicadas semanas en las que Yamé amenazaba con no abandonar el poder y en las que se evidenciaba la posibilidad de una sangrienta guerra civil, Tijan tuvo la idea de imprimir sobre camisetas un lema cuyo autor no está claro, pero que ha marcado profundamente la historia reciente del pequeño país de África Occidental, Gambia Has Decided. They came there, they met me printing thesis, Gambia has decided. So when they met me there, so they came inside the office, so they asked me who gave you the contract to print these t-shirts. And I told them, nobody, I'm just doing it to, to, to earn my living. And I was detained there for, for four good days. So, so he asked me a question, he said, what's your name? I told him, Tijan. He said, your surname? I told him, Baro. He said, your, your surname will not favor you. So we will kill you and Baro. They thought that I was related with him. So from there they started torturing me. We chose our leader. So now we decided, we decided to choose Adam Baro as our as our leader. He was the very one who mentioned that what Gambia decided. So that's why that, that that's why we took the slogan from. Then after we started printing t-shirts, so giving to people. In the Gambia, there is no freedom of expression under the regime of President Yaya Jame. The Gambia has consistently remained the worst perpetrator of violations of freedom of expression rights in West Africa. Entre las principales víctimas del sistema represivo de Jamé están, sin duda, los periodistas, que hasta ahora no han podido ejercer libremente su profesión. Working as a journalist in Jamé's regime. Um, It's like you find yourself in a catch-22 situation, which is quite confusing. I mean, uh, I mean, characterized by fear that brought about self-censorship and censorship at the same time. Uh, freedom of expression uh, was absolutely dead. I was in exile in Senegal, Nigeria, in Ghana. I spent four years in exile. We want to do our job in a way that we will educate our people, our nation. But President Jammeh, that was not his ideology. So he does not allow intelligent journalists and critical investigative journalists, critical minds to be living in this country doing something that he does not like. You know, because he does not like um, a free flow of information. So this is why he has threatened us to leave the country, in short. The new president, Adam Baro, he is a cool guy. In the independent celebration, he has promised us that he is going to leave the media to do their job in the way it should be done. He has promised us. No son muchos los que han logrado salir con vida de la prisión de máxima seguridad Mile 2, situada en la capital Banjul. Landing Sané, que sobrevivió a la opresión de este pequeño rincón del infierno reservado a los presos políticos, es un ejemplo de cómo Yamé no confiaba ni siquiera en sus más cercanos colaboradores y familiares. Landing, de 53 años, ex militar y primo del dictador, pasó en este centro de reclusión 16 años. Enough evidence against me, and then to produce adequate uh, in, uh, witnesses against me. Mile two is a horrible place. The condition in mile two. Es comparable a cualquier lugar en este mundo. Es incluso peor que el hell. We have also witnessed the execution that he made. It's very sad. It's very sad. Sometimes I don't want to talk about it. It reminds me a lot.
It's good that things are over. And we pray to God that it's never repeated anymore.